For a high school physics course such as this one, all we really need to understand for the cathode ray tube are the two different voltages. One that accelerates the electrons down here at the anode and cathode, and then a pair of plates that has a voltage across them called the deflecting plates. So we have to worry about the deflecting voltage as well. Now, literally at the one end, electrons are kind of boiled off of this hot filament and then they get trapped in an electric field and accelerate towards the screen on the right. Now, we call that the accelerating voltage and we already know the math behind that. The potential energy stored across those accelerating plates is converted into kinetic energy. So if I increase the voltage across the plates, I increase the potential energy and the final speed of that electron increases significantly. So when I run this thing, currently I have no voltage across these deflecting plates. And when I hit start, you'll see electrons shoot straight through undeflected with a given speed. And they strike the screen. This is a profile we're looking at. It's like a, a cross section of a cathode ray tube. They strike the screen in the dead center. Now, if I put a little bit of deflection between the plates, say 10 volts, we see that it's no longer at the center mark. It's deflected upwards. So you can guess, if these are electrons traveling from left to right, and we get an upwards deflection, this top plate must be positive to draw the electrons upwards, and the bottom plate would be negative, repelling the electrons upwards. In fact, if I make my voltage the reverse polarity, you see that the deflection is equal and opposite. It's on the bottom. Now at the bottom of the simulation, it actually gives us our deflection, negative 2.2 millimeters. And what we want to do is use the simulation to see what the relationship is between the deflecting voltage and our deflection, or our final deflection. So let's go back to our positive. We see our deflection is 2.2 millimeters. Let's see what happens when we double the voltage, when I double the deflecting voltage. Now, one would think that if I double the voltage, have more voltage across this plate, I would have a greater electric field and a greater force acting on those electrons to pull it upwards. So if I double it to say 20 volts, from 10 volts to 20, notice my deflection went from 2.2 to 4.3, roughly doubled. Now it is a simulation, so there's a little bit of room for error there in the calculations. So we went from 2.2 to roughly 4.4 or 4.3 millimeters, depending on how we're rounding in the simulation. So if I go from 20 volts upwards to 30 volts, remember I started at 2.2 at 10 volts, I'm at 6.5 millimeters. 40 volts, we're at 8.6 millimeters. So as the deflecting voltage increases, obviously my deflection also increases. And we say that it's a direct relationship. So if I have 40 volts at 8.6 millimeters of deflection, 20 volts should be half of that. It should be 4.3. So if I go back to 20 and give it a chance to run, you see we're back to 4.3 millimeters of deflection, a direct relationship. Double one, you double the other. Half one, you half the other. So now let's look at the effects of our accelerating voltage. So our current acceleration is 400 volts. If I drop my acceleration in half, let's see what my final deflection is. Now before I do that, let's think about what would happen. If I reduce the voltage across these accelerating plates, the electron will not gain as much kinetic energy, so it should be moving slower. Now if the electron suddenly moves slower, it's going to spend more time between the plates. So the deflecting plates will have a greater impact on them. So let's see what happens when I drop my acceleration in half. So I've gone from an accelerating voltage of 400 volts down to an accelerating voltage of 200 volts. The electron is now traveling slower. Let's run it. Travel slower and it deflects up higher because it spends more time between the deflecting plates. Now my original deflection was 4.3 when the accelerating voltage was 400. If I half the accelerating voltage, my deflection doubles. So it's an inverse relationship. Half the accelerating voltage, double the deflection. So if I go back to 400, back to 400, we see that it's 4.3 millimeters. So if I double the voltage again, back to 400, I half the deflection. 
So if I take my 400 volts and I double it again, we would expect a deflection to drop by a factor of two. So if we're at 4.3 now, we would expect it around 2.2. Bring it all the way up to 800. And my final deflection, yes, much less, 2.2 millimeters. So to summarize, our overall deflection is directly related to the deflecting voltage and inversely related to the accelerating voltage.